In Creole Parametric 10.0, you can now use a reference to drive the amount of stretch in a warp feature. If you've never used the warp feature, I strongly recommend that you add this to your toolbox. Let's get into the warp command. If you go to the editing overflow menu, here we have the warp command. And I did a video on this years ago. It has an updated dashboard. It looks really pretty right now. For warping this particular body, well, first we have to select the geometry that we want to warp. I will select the body. And then for the direction of the warp, let me turn on my datum plane visibility. I have a datum plane that I can use for driving that direction. And then you can see the different choices that you have in the dashboard for what you can do in the warp tool. I want to stretch this chair in order to make a version for taller people. Right now, the direction is going wrong. Let me choose flip direction because I want to drive it upwards. And I'm also going to adjust what I'm going to stretch. I like the bottom part of the chair, but I don't want to stretch the whole thing from about there looks good. For controlling the amount of stretch, in Creo 9 and earlier versions, you had a numerical value that you could change. Instead, you can go to the drop down list next to scale, change it to by reference, and then pick the reference that you want to drive the amount of stretch. And there you can see how it has adjusted. I will hit the check mark, and now we have adjusted the part. I'm going to take that feature and suppress it to show you a different method of getting to that. Once again, I will go to the Editing Overflow menu and choose Warp. Let me select my body, and then for my direction reference, I'll use the right mouse button in order to get to it. I will choose to do a stretch once again, and let's flip it because I want to drive it from the other side. Let me adjust the amount of the area for the stretch. When you are dragging this drag handle, if you hold down the Shift key, you can lock into a reference, just like when you are changing the depth of an extrude. It automatically changed the scale drop down to by reference and put that reference in the collector. And this is known as a persistent reference. So for example, if I hit the check mark and then I take this datum plane that I'm using to drive it and change its value, let's change this to 45 you can see that it updated automatically on the computer screen. So if I change the reference, then the warp feature is going to change as well. Let me suppress that one. And I'm gonna show you the other way that you can drive the change where it is not using the reference as a persistent reference. Once again, I will go to the editing overflow menu and let's choose warp. And then I will select the body for the reference for the direction collector. I'll use the other datum plane in this situation. I will do a stretch. Let's flip the direction. Let me adjust what I am going to stretch. And this time when I'm dragging this, you can see the number is changing. But instead of holding down the Shift key to select a reference, I'm going to use the Alt key and the reference highlights. And in this particular situation, it allowed me to lock into that reference, but it's still using a numerical value in order to drive the amount of stretch. I will hit the check mark, and this time if I change this datum plane, let me use edit dimensions, and I will change this to a value of 40, and then double click on the background of the screen. Come on, regenerate. Uh, you'll see this, that changing the datum plane did not change the warp feature because it is not a persistent reference used in this particular feature. So if I go to edit definition, you'll see that it is still using a numerical value. And so that is the update to the warp feature in Creole Parametric 10.0.